Welcome back to Precious Blood Renewal Center. As we know by now, the Feast of Pentecost propels us into the season of the Holy Spirit. When we live under the influence of the Holy Spirit, we participate in a new creation. The third key word or concept of this season that we will explore today is, there are different gifts. I am standing in front of the bell tower at Precious Blood Center. These two bells probably look the same to you, but they produce different sounds. And when they are rung together, it is part of their beauty. Different gifts complement one another for the sake of a better world. God offers different gifts to different people, but instead of standing before God with open hands to receive our gift, many times we sit on our hands. And often, we look at another person and we judge that other person as different than ourselves and therefore not acceptable. But gifts are not given for our own enjoyment, but for the sake of serving, for making the world a better place. We are all part of the body of Christ with different gifts. God created me for a purpose, not the same purpose as Bishop Robert Barron or Jeff Cavins, both great speakers who I admire, but there is no reason for me to compare myself to them and feel inferior. God created me for a unique purpose. So I put myself into God's hands and I welcome the Holy Spirit to fan into a flame and empower me to share my unique gift. St. Paul, in his first letter to the Corinthians in chapter 12, writes, As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. To use another metaphor, St. Paul says that there are different tools given to different people for the sake of working together for the benefit of the body of Christ on earth. For example, if you are building a new home for yourself, you will engage the skills of carpenters who bring their hammers and nails and saws and uh, uh, lumber. But you also engage other people with other kind of skills like plumbers who will bring pipes and uh, sinks and faucets and uh, pipe wrenches, etc. And you will engage other skilled workers who bring their electrical skills and they'll bring electrical wire and conduit and screwdrivers and pliers, etc. And all of those skills working together in complementarity build a beautiful home for you. When we first receive new gifts from God, sometimes we're unsure of how to use them or we're slow to start using them. And it's natural to be a little unsure at first, but as we exercise them, we become more comfortable and they become second nature. For example, if you are comfortable working in a carpenter shop, for example, and you use a table saw a lot, but then at some point you uh, decide to get a little fancier and use a jigsaw. Now, when you first use that jigsaw, you, you start to you gotta be very careful and, and very determined and, and slow so that you don't mess up the piece of wood that you're working on. Or if you buy a new computer for yourself, this new keyboard might be laid out just a little differently and, and the button to scroll up or scroll down is lo at a different location than in your old computer and you kind of have to search and peck for a while. Or when you look at the computer screen, you, you want to 
in certain information, but you, it's it's at a different location than your previous computer, and and so you got to be very deliberate and conscious and slow. But the more you use it, the more natural, the more comfortable you become with it. And after a while, this new computer is so much more efficient for you than your previous computer. And so it is with our spiritual gifts. We need to exercise them, even if they're not comfortable at first. But with exercise, they become comfortable, become natural, and benefit the whole body of Christ. The church is the body of Christ. And just like a human body, each part has different functions. But every one of them is a gift of the Holy Spirit designed for the good of the whole. Through the Holy Spirit, we can see the uniqueness and giftedness of one another. There was a young mother who was watching her three-year-old child straddle the bathtub. His right foot was steadying himself on the bathroom mat, and his left foot was in the tub vigorously splashing water. His small hands gripped the smooth white porcelain tub. After watching him for a few minutes, the mother said, let go, son, get in. And she placed her hands under his armpits, lifted him up, and placed him in the water amid the floating toys. The Feast of Pentecost reminds us of the spiritual gifts of the Spirit that we received in baptism and confirmation. Furthermore, the celebration of Pentecost urges us to take the gifts we have received and put them into action. Sometimes, like the boy in the story, it is easier to straddle the tub. The Holy Spirit calls us to immersion, to consistently use the talents and gifts we have received. We are commissioned to service. Jesus said, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. Every office staff, every assembly line, every family needs all the members doing their job, their responsibility, or else the atmosphere in the office or the factory or the home is dismal and the outcome is second rate. And so it is in the church. Every member has a God-given gift which is needed for happiness for enjoyment in the church, and for first-rate outcome. In order for the church to be dynamic, in order for the church to be its best version. One evening I went to a jazz concert performed by the St. Joseph's Symphony Orchestra, and I was struck by how the different instruments complemented one another. For a while, one musician stepped forward and played a solo and then stepped back. And another musician stepped forward and played a solo, all the while being accompanied by the other instruments in the background. For It was an amazing complementarity of different gifts. In the same way, our church is made up of an amazing number of complementary gifts. When they are all used, we are making a difference in the world. When you have false humility and don't acknowledge your musical gift, then you mess up the orchestra. When you don't share your gift in the church, or when you prevent someone else from sharing their gift, you mess up the mission of the church. What specific gifts has God given you? And how can you use them for the good of others? I have a poster hanging in my room which shows a small sailboat on a large lake and in the boat, there are two individuals who are adjusting the, the sails. And there's a quote on the poster that says, 
We cannot direct the wind, but we can adjust our sails. We cannot direct the wind, but we can adjust our sails. For a sailor who knows what he's doing, he can adjust those sails no matter which direction the wind is blowing from, and he can adjust those sails so that the boat ends up at the destination on the other side of the lake that he wants to go to, even if the wind is blowing against him. A good sailor can adjust the sails in such a way to catch the wind, to move that boat across the lake to the destination that, is, that he's meant to, to get to. Our spiritual gifts are like sails on a boat. The Holy Spirit wants to move us forward. The Holy Spirit is the wind, the breath of God, and the gifts of the Spirit are our sails, and we need to use those sails, engage those sails, adjust those sails in order to bring us to the mission that God has entrusted us with. As people of faith, we must be open to trusting the Holy Spirit to use us, to fill us, and to shape us. This is a challenging thought for some of us, and a scary thought for others. As we continue in the season of the Holy Spirit, let our prayer be that we are open to the Holy Spirit filling us and using us to transform our communities, our churches, our world. Do you know this song? Let's conclude today by singing together. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Melt me, mold me, fill me, use me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Plan to join me here again next Tuesday as we reflect on another key word of what it means to live in the season of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes bells call us to prayer. Sometimes bells ring out freedom, like they did on the recent 4th of July. And they challenge us to work for the honest freedom of all our people, so that all the gifts of the Holy Spirit of all the people can benefit the body of Christ.